The Sons of Antiquity present The Hot Take Show Today's episode Career Women Ha huh. Women Am I right? You are indeed correct Women What do we need them for anyway? Can't live with them Can't live without them Well hello everyone Welcome back to The Hot Take Show It's your boy Dan This is Evan And we're talking about career women today Not all women No we're Talking about career women which uh, are a different breed altogether. And Evan has some seriously spicy takes on that. So I'm just going to give the floor up to this man right here. All right. To introduce it real quick, let's address the cardinal deadly sin, according to feminism, which is criticizing a woman for any reason, even if they deserve it. Even if you're nice about it, you can't criticize a woman nowadays. Is that like a personal attack or something? And why do you, when do you think that started? It's probably some vestige of... The way things used to be when women were more gentle anyway. So it's like treat them like, treat them as a gentle sex. But now they're just like men. Alana McLaughlin. I'm talking to career women here. Why is your job so, quote, empowering when you probably work in a soulless corporation doing meaningless work? Why not raise kids instead? For most people, I'm not talking about you doctors and you politicians, whatever. That's another question, but... Anyone who's, most people, including men, don't do meaningful work, especially if you work in a cubicle somewhere like me. I don't do meaningful work. Yeah, in the modern day, so many people do very meaningless work. You're right. So men and women are, are caught up in that. Well, I'd say in a given week, I probably only do about 15 minutes of real, actual work. Yeah, they're saying, oh, I'm going to be empowered by working under some tyrannical male boss. Instead of working under my loving husband and taking care of our, our children and our home that we built. Instead of working for a wage, like a wage slave, under someone who doesn't care about you, under a corporation that really is just using you for money. That's it. Yeah, how empowering is that for real? It is not. I would agree. <laughs> the idea that people have to work in order to have value is just a big, uh, it's, it's a big assumption in this whole debate about whether women should work. Because I think a lot of women and men feel that if a woman doesn't work, then she's useless. My wife is a stay-at-home mom, and people give her flack all the time they say like it's not like are you going to get a job it's when, so when are you going back to work that goes to show how much feminism has succeeded in helping women to become more like men and maybe their intention was for that to be empowering however it really just ends up dumping a bunch of the worst of what men have to deal with onto women because who wants you know who wants to work for a soulless corporation and do crummy work and slave away all for basically nothing. At least a man is doing it for his family. But when a woman is a career woman, she's not doing it for anything. She's just doing it. <laughs> now, let's say you embark on a quest to defeat all career women and return us to a traditional way of life. Who is the final boss of those career women? <laughs> May I present to you Elizabeth Holmes. <laughs> this woman is really the poster child for everything that is wrong with modern women and feminism today. She lied and stole from investors. She ripped people off, became a billionaire almost overnight, all based on a lie, and was found out, and immediately all of her giant empire collapsed because this woman is basically just a crazy lady, a psychopath. And she has been known, according to many sources, to even make her voice deeper around male colleagues and around certain professional people in order to seem, I guess, in theory, more masculine. I guess she felt like if she took on a more masculine tone, they would take her more seriously. People have been struck by her deep voice. We've made it possible to eliminate the tubes and tubes of blood. But it turns out it may have been all an act. And so she did all this, tricked people into investing in her company, which wasn't actually legitimate. And now she's probably facing 20 years in prison for all this. So congrats. If you just stayed in the home, none of this would have happened. <laughs> All right. So let's get to the big question here. Should married women even be working? And I, I'm going to say no, and I'll explain why. For one, they devalue the labor pool in general. Think of supply and demand. Let's say theoretically, all basically all women join the workforce, all working age women. Then you're doubling the labor pool. Therefore, when you double the supply, the demand is cut back a lot. And if you think about it, uh, about a century ago or more, people who were employed could expect what's called the family wage, 
which means the employer was expected due to Christian charity and just supply and demand to ex- to pay their employees enough to support themselves and a family. And if you think about it, it's supply and demand where people, you know, the, there's more laborers, more employees, so the value in the wage is going to go down. Therefore, nowadays, two, it takes both in the couple to work in order just to have enough. Is it just a capitalist conspiracy? Because I, I really think it is. It was just increase the – to get women out of the house – just to increase the total number of workers so you don't have to pay them as much. And you you have more you have more product in the end for less per person. Yes. Yes. Instead of paying one man twice as much to do the same job, now you can pay two people. In some ways you can get away with paying them less than half or doing the same work that was once done by one man. So here's what I want to know. Should women hold positions of power over men? Quick answer, Evan. No, except in very rare circumstances. I totally agree. And you know why this is? It's biology. It goes back to Darwin, our old friend Darwin, who talked about natural selection. And men were naturally selected to be the leaders. Why? Because back in the day, they were big and strong, and that's what mattered in fighting off other enemies. And it it required decisiveness. It required a certain amount of uh, dispassionate, critical thinking. These traits all developed when men, and the ones who developed those traits, survived, passed them on to their children, who, if they were men, generally got those traits, so on and so forth. Natural selection, evolution. Here we are today. We haven't changed. We're still biological beings, and men are still the ones who generally have a greater possession of those traits that make for successful leaders. And keep in mind that most civilizations that once existed are no longer in existence. It is very rare, even among men, for there to be good quality leaders, people who can wield power effectively. Most of the time, they get destroyed and uh, usurped by other forces. So even among men, it's highly competitive. And to think that women who are biologically not uh, suited to holding positions of power could somehow wield it better than men is simply foolish. I won't take agency away from men, but mm-hmm. lots of men are raised with the expectation that, you know, the dad just sits around and watches ESPN all day. And the, yeah. and the woman does all the hard work and leadership. And she's the brains of the operation. She's the brains. Dad used to be... The smart guys, the good guys, and and then they became absolute morons. We didn't complain when they came up with Archie Bunker, so they said, oh, good, okay, let's make you the stupidest idiots in the world. Like, let me talk to you. Let me ask my boss. Yeah. Oh, Oh, the... Don't even get me started with those boomer quotes. We're going to have a whole episode on boomers. I've just decided. Okay, okay, boomer. I mean, I get my wife's input, but I... At the end of the day, you make the decisions. Yeah. Exactly. Especially when you make the money. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to go there, but <laughs> I'll go there. I'll go there all day. Do you feel that some girls have too much talent and ability to waste on a home and children? Yes, I think many girls do. But some girls have a great deal to offer, and they certainly don't make any contribution to the business world, sitting home with their children or cooking dinner for their husband. Who cares what you think? You're a girl now. <laughs> Riddle me this. If women were so good and so able to wield power successfully over men, why is it that no civilization has ever been created and ruled by women? Patriarchy. And if the patriarchy is so successful at keeping these strong, powerful women down, maybe, just maybe, they are the best and they deserve to be in their positions of power. Because if they're strong enough to keep these women who are actually better than them down, well then... They must actually be better suited to the task. Oh, no. (laughs) Are working women happier than stay-at-home moms? Because ultimately, at the end of the day, this is what most philosophers say is even the point of life outside of the afterlife, is finding happiness, or at least living the good life, as Aristotle says. Empirically, you can see that stay-at-home moms in America are happier, on average, than employed women. In almost every field, it's one of the happiest lifestyles out there. It brings a lot of fulfillment raising children. I don't know. I don't, I don't know what could be more wholesome than that, than raising your own children. I agree. You are raising the next generation. Without that, there is no future for mankind. Well said. Thank you. Now, before any of you go call me misogynist, that's Mr. Misogynist to you. Thank you.